how bad can it get for a cup of coffee to become too expensive? Starbucks shares have plummeted over 17% in value since early May, and that's because sales have dropped. What's causing this coffee giant's stumble, and how bad can it be? Starbucks is often considered a key indicator of consumer spending, which is a significant part of the U.S. economy. The company's recent struggles have sparked concerns about whether the broader economy is weakening or if these issues are specific to Starbucks. Consumers are feeling the impact of long-term inflation and high borrowing costs. Already, Starbucks has reported a roughly 2% drop in revenue to $8.6 billion for the first quarter of the year, falling short of analysts' expectations. The same significant slowdown in U.S. consumer spending, driven by persistent inflation and rising credit card debt, has affected other restaurants this year. Brands like McDonald's, KFC, and Pizza Hut. During the pandemic, Starbucks experienced a surge in business thanks to its app and federal stimulus checks. However, the company now needs to rethink its strategy to avoid being seen as just another fast food chain specialized in providing coffee and food items to customers. Negative publicity from a dispute with the Workers' United Labor Union related to the Israel-Hamas conflict caused damage to the company's image. Though it sued the union after it posted a message supporting Palestinians, it didn't stop the boycotts. Since its highest point reached in July 2021, Starbucks' stock has fallen by 39%, with a sharp 27% drop since November alone, due to these recent challenges. If we examine the specific figures, such as transactions, it's clear that the North America transactions dropped by 7% this year compared to last year when sales had increased by 6%. Additionally, change in comparable store sales decreased by 3% in this first quarter compared to a 12% increase last year. Despite the decline in sales, Starbucks opened more stores this year. They now have 18,065 stores, which is a 3% increase from last year's 17,482 stores. This expansion helped keep the total revenue nearly the same, at about $6.38 billion, even though individual store sales were down. But still, Starbucks' profit decreased. This year, their profit is estimated to be around $1.1 billion with the way things are going, down from $1.2 billion last year. The operating margin, which measures how much profit Starbucks makes for every dollar they earn, also dropped. Last year, they kept 19% of every dollar as profit, but this year, they kept 18%. The decline of 17% that everyone's been up about could be evident in the drop of its shares as released on May 1st, going from $87.61 on April 30th to $77.72 currently. Let's be honest, premium coffee is often the first luxury to go when budgets tighten. A trip to Starbucks nowadays can easily set you back $6 for a drink, comparable to the cost of a modest meal. If you check their current menu, the prices are astonishingly high. For instance, a standard size summer refresher is now $6.45. A vanilla sweet cream nitro cold brew costs $5.75. And a small bacon and egg sandwich is $5.45. Plus, you're likely to be prompted for a tip at checkout. These soaring prices, coupled with various other factors like the insane credit card debts, are driving customers to surrender, particularly in the premium retail segment. As reported by the Federal Reserve Bank of New York, the U.S. citizens now owe $1 trillion on their credit cards. That's a huge number. From October to December 2022, credit card debt went up by more than $60 billion, hitting $986 billion. At the same time, interest rates on credit cards have gotten higher. The average APR for all accounts in the first quarter of 2024 is 21.59%. That's up from the first quarter of 2023, when the average was 21.47%, and is the highest APR since the Fed began tracking in 1994.
Meanwhile, the average for accounts assessed interest fell to 22.63%, a slight decrease from 22.75% in 2023. The Federal Reserve raised these rates to try to slow down the economy and bring down high prices. Even though lots of people have jobs right now, the lowest unemployment rate in over 50 years, high prices and interest rates are making it tough for some to pay off their debts. On average, a person owed $5,805 on their credit card at the end of 2022, which is 11% more than the year before. According to the report from the New York Federal Reserve, the total debt grew by 2.4%, reaching an unprecedented total of $17.69 trillion in the first quarter of 2024. This increase is primarily driven by a significant rise in mortgage balances, which surged by $190 billion from the previous quarter, bringing the total mortgage debt to $12.44 trillion by the end of March 2024. Balances on home equity lines of credit increased by $16 billion, representing the eighth consecutive quarterly increase since first quarter of 2022, and now stand at $376 billion. In addition to the mortgage debt, auto loan balances also saw an upward trajectory, increasing by $9 billion to a new high of $1.62 trillion. This marks a continuation of the growth trend that has been observed since the second quarter of 2020. Other types of consumer debt showed mixed trends. Student loan balances remained relatively stable, with a minor decrease of $6 billion, maintaining a total of $1.6 trillion. Other consumer loans, including retail cards and other miscellaneous loans, saw a quarterly decrease of $11 billion. The rise in delinquency rates is worrying, suggesting that financial stress may be increasing for some borrowers. Specifically, the percentage of people newly falling 30 days behind on credit card bills rose to a new 13-year high in the first quarter, reaching 8.9%. The same situation is faced on car loans. As a matter of fact, more borrowers are falling behind on auto payments. The percentage of car loans going into early stage delinquency rose to 7.7% at an annual rate in the fourth quarter, a level not seen since 2010, indicating that a notable portion of borrowers are struggling to meet their debt obligations. In a graph showing the total debt balance from 2004 through the first quarter of 2024, it clearly shows the distinction between housing debt in blue and non-housing debt in red. Over the past two decades, both categories have generally trended upward, with non-housing debt consistently constituting the majority of the total debt. As of the first quarter of 2024, housing debt stands at $12.82 trillion, while non-housing debt totals almost $18 trillion. The Michigan Consumer Sentiment Index, a critical economic indicator which has been here since 1960, has recently shown signs of distress. This index, derived from a monthly survey conducted by the University of Michigan, involves at least 500 interviews across the continental U.S., focusing on three core areas, personal finances, business conditions, and buying conditions. In the summer of 2022, the index plummeted to an all-time low, but had begun to recover gradually. However, this recovery has proven to be short-lived. The latest readings indicate a dramatic downturn, with the month-over-month -month U.S. index of consumer sentiment dropping nearly 13%, reaching its current level of 67.40 and down from 77.20 last month. This significant decline highlights a substantial shift in market sentiment, raising alarms among economists and market observers. Consumer spending, which constitutes nearly 70% of the U.S. economy, is a crucial driver of economic activity. The sudden drop in consumer sentiment suggests a potential slowdown in spending, raising concerns about the broader economic outlook.
prominent figures like Peter Schiff have voiced strong concerns, suggesting that the situation could deteriorate further. Schiff argues that consumers are already apprehensive about rising inflation and high interest rates, although he notes that interest rates are not yet at particularly high levels. The Federal Reserve faces a challenging dilemma. To combat rising inflation, which is a significant concern for consumers, they may need to raise interest rates further. However, this action could exacerbate consumer worries, thereby lowering confidence even more. Thus, the Fed is caught in a bind. Raising interest rates might help control inflation, but could also undermine consumer confidence, leading to a potentially vicious cycle of declining sentiment and economic activity. The current economic situation presents a complex challenge for the Federal Reserve. Higher interest rates, which are typically used to combat inflation, could further erode consumer confidence. This is because as rates rise, borrowing costs increase, impacting consumers and businesses already burdened with high levels of debt. On the other hand, if the Fed opts to keep rates low or even cut them, as it has indicated it might, inflation could spiral out of control, which would also undermine consumer confidence. The dilemma is exacerbated by the significant levels of debt held by Americans. Despite relatively low interest rates, the burden is still considerable, prompting the Fed to halt rate hikes when financial instability became evident, marked by the failure of some banks. This decision reflects the precarious balance the Fed must maintain between managing inflation and sustaining financial stability. The fiscal position of the U.S. government adds another layer of complexity. Each rate hike increases the government's interest expenditure on its debt, thereby widening budget deficits. We can see the U.S. deficit now reaching an astonishing $1.70 trillion, driven by the U.S. government spending more than its revenue. Unfortunately, that's not all. As predicted by the U.S. Congressional Budget Office, it will eventually reach its highest annual rate in the next 10 years, projected to be around $2.58 trillion. This trend is putting upward pressure on inflation, creating a feedback loop where efforts to control inflation by raising rates can paradoxically exacerbate it. Additionally, higher interest rates tend to slow economic growth, which reduces tax revenues and further strains the fiscal balance. In this environment, the recent decline in the Michigan Consumer Sentiment Index may be a harbinger of deeper economic issues. As Peter Schiff and other analysts suggest, the drop in consumer confidence could be the beginning of more significant economic problems. The interplay of high debt levels, fiscal pressures, and the Fed's monetary policy decisions creates a scenario where managing one aspect of the economy can have unintended negative consequences on others. He's well aware that consumers are giving up, and the implications this will have on the broader economic picture are still yet to be seen. We know that federal data is usually slow to react to changes like this, which is why many analysts look to things like the Starbucks earnings report to get a better picture. It's pretty clear that at least in the premium sector, we are witnessing some significant macro shifts that will undoubtedly bleed into at least some aspects of other spending. These companies provide valuable snapshots of consumer behavior, particularly in the premium sector. Recent earnings reports from such companies suggest that significant macroeconomic shifts are underway. If consumers are tightening their belts even in premium segments, it is likely that this behavior will extend to other areas of spending as well. This trend could foreshadow a broader slowdown in consumer activity, which is a crucial component of economic health, given that consumer spending accounts for nearly 70% of the U.S. economy. While current earnings reports show that many companies are still performing adequately, the true impact of declining consumer sentiment may become more apparent as more companies release their earnings in the coming months. This influx of data will help solidify analysts' baseline cases, providing a clearer picture of the economic outlook. If earnings reports reveal widespread declines, it could trigger increased concern in the markets, potentially leading to a sell-off as investors react to the accumulating evidence of economic weakness. In all these, what could possibly be the end for Starbucks, for you and I if the Fed's rates keep escalating? Share your thoughts and don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and click on the bell icon to turn on your notifications whenever we upload new videos on this channel.